Hello and welcome to another quick tip. Today we're going to talk about how to do this piece that I've done for HP last year, as by HP for their uh, booth at Adobe Max. So this was um, <clears throat> kind of like a tunnel where you, people could go through uh, and um, it was a, a bit of like a reflective uh, floor and I really wanted the particles to kind of go down and kind of go into the edges and collide to it. So let's go into scene 4D. And this is just the bare minimum of uh, the original file, which is just uh, illumination, which is just uh, the line, which is just an HDRI. And the geo, I just have um, a loft, which is the background, and the pyramid we're going to use later. So again, particles, I already said particles probably 300 times, so we get an export ecosystem. Let's put it a bit organized. And since I've done this in the, before, I'm just going to delete the ones that I don't need uh, to keep it a bit more clean. All right, and more. And let's go into the meter. So the default is a rectangle, but we actually want a, a box, so let's change that. And again, because I've done this before, I know the size, so I'm just going to put the values that I've used. All right, here we go. And the rest will leave it at, as it is. And on the emission, we go. Uh, oh, looking now, I can see that I should rotate the emitter 90%. And as well, let's push it up because uh, we want the particles to flow from the top and then rotate around. Right, so back to the emission, I want it to actually be hexagonal. And what it, this does is that it pretty much fills the space. So let's put speed to zero. And if I uh, preview it here, you see that it's now all condensed. And the way that this works is, for example, if we go and change the radius to 15, you will try to fill up the volume with that radius. So it is less particles. But free works really good for us, so let's keep that. All right, so let's preview it again. And that's great. And now let's just quickly go on to uh, display <coughs> and change it to, uh, I'll say, like, squares. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I wanted them to move around. So obviously the, <laughs> my first thought was let's use turbulence. So let's do that. Uh, modifiers, uh, XP turbulence. So I left it pretty much at the default. I just bump up a little bit the strength. Obviously, this was a bit of play back and forth to understand what I wanted. Um, and as you see, things are kind of um, going out and not colliding, obviously. And um, looking at it, I just realized as well that uh, it's emitting on all frames, which we don't want. So let's fix that. So remove <clears throat> that. And we just wanted to do it for one frame. All right. Let's here we go. So yeah, so now we wanted to collide, so let's get ourselves a cube, uh, which will kind of be our container. Let's do it. And again, I'm putting the values that I've tried before. 100, 264, and 490. Okay, let's push this back. I'm just for the tool kind of eyeballing it here. Just should be good. And then if I see with the particles, it's, uh, it's kind of works. So let's, let's use this. Um, also, I don't want to see, I want to see through it. So just X, Y, and then I don't want to see it in the render. So let's take that off. And we're using a collider tag. Um, I don't want them to bounce. So I'll just put to zero. And we're going to change the normals because now they're outside. And what it does is that it doesn't, all the particles are inside. So if we change the normals to inside, and preview again. There we go. So now you see it's kind of going down the edges on the, on the line and at the bottom it's kind of colliding as well. So that's great. But as you see, it's kind of, um, they're kind of separating too much as they go down and I want them to keep more together uh, and I want it to be with a much nicer flow. So for that, what I did was actually, uh, I added a dynamics tag, uh, sorry, uh, object, and I added the XP fluid effects. I kept it pretty much to the default and that worked quite well. Um, and as you see now, they are trying to stay more together uh, and it creates this really nice uh, flow to them. All right. So now that we have this, I really want them to move around. Imagine like a washing machine. Um, so for that, I initially tried wind, uh, but I actually got better results with the gravity. So by default, it's too much. And I just wanted to re be really subtle. So uh, obviously with experimentation, I ended up getting to the value of 12. 
Um, and let me just push this up so you see. So that's the arrow, right? And pretty much what I did is I um, keyframed the rotation of the gravity uh, throughout the whole piece. So let's add at the end as well. Okay. And this as well, I'll quickly just put this to be linear. Okay. And if we just quickly preview without the meter, uh, just so you see, it's as you see the arrow, it's just kind of going around and it's going to be very subtle. Um, but I didn't want it, I wanted to, to kind of play well with the turbulence as well. So if we preview it together, it's kind of sliding down a bit to the right. And then hard to see now there, but as it's going up, there's also particles there. The particles kind of try to go up as well. Uh, so that's pretty much what I wanted. And obviously if I put the render, nothing happens. Uh, so I used the redshift uh, object tag. So let's do that to the meter. Okay, and here in particles on the mode, uh, I'm going to use custom. Um, I initially tried spheres, but uh, the idea was actually to f see where the flow was going. So for that, I decided to use a pyramid instead uh, because it kind of feels like a, an arrow. Um, so I really wanted that and it's too big. So let's again, by experimenting, I know that this is a lot that were quite good. But as you see now, they're all pointing to one direction. So the way to kind of go around this is if we go to the emitter, uh, back again, and on extended data, there, and there's a rotation, so you just uh, enable it, and we want it to be the tangent of where they're going, and I want the vector to be positive, oh, so that's where the, the, it will be facing, and if we just preview it now, stand on the preview again, okay, this should be good. And here we go. Now we have this really nice world uh, and movement uh, just by adding this kind of arrow to it. Um, so let's add colors to it. So again, back onto the meter. On display, the default is this green single color, but we actually want to use gradient with par parameter. And that's because I want uh, the colors to be influenced by its speed. So if it's uh, zero speed, for example, here we see minimum max, you can change and that will give you uh, different uh, details. Um, it will give us different things, uh, and you can adjust, obviously, I I think I left it uh, the max pretty much to the default. And you see, um, I'm changing to the colors now, and if we go back to it and uh, refresh it, um, let's move it a little bit, you see the green, the darker green is when it's kind of st still, and it goes to the lighter color, the faster it moves. So if we now Let's stop here and preview. There we go. So this is pretty much the whole piece. And, and the material itself was quite simple. Um, I'm just using the color user data. So if you just search for user data, drag the color user data node, and on attributes, we just toggle that down, particles, particle color. So this is pretty much getting that information from the X particles. Um, as I was experimenting with the look, I decided to end up uh, combining, compositing the Fresnel on top of it and just also adding a bit of uh, noise and, you know, it's just a very simple material. Uh, I want it to be quite clean um, and I wanted to, obviously, there's a lot of uh, roughness in the reflection because I didn't want it to be sharp. Um, and the, the main reason is, like, I'm not using GI and this is because it was a very big... Um, format 60 frames per second and it was a lot of frames so I was giving myself a little easy life and just making it uh, look good without uh, spending too much on the render. So hope you enjoyed it and excited to see what you come, come up with and thanks for watching.